There's been some weird stuff happening with our sun lately. Giant holes are forming, swirling polar vortexes, epic solar flares, and coronal mass ejections that could have devastating consequences on modern technology. This is all part of a natural cycle that our local star has been going through for billions of years. The only difference now is that we have the technology to observe and record all these strange events that occur around a solar maximum. The sun operates on an 11 year cycle, fluctuating from periods of high activity to low activity. We are approaching a peak in the solar cycle over the next two years. So weird occurrences on the sun are going to become a lot more common. And for the first time in history, we'll be observing a solar maximum up close in high definition. So it's a great time to get familiar with what's going on at the center of our solar system. And here is what you need to know. This is the space race. Not one, but two gigantic holes have opened up on the surface of the sun. These occurrences made headlines across the world in March 2023, and looking at the images from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, those holes are between 20 and 30 times the diameter of the Earth. They look downright terrifying. They're not, though. Don't worry. These things aren't harmless either, but it is nothing catastrophic. They're not even holes, really. What we are looking at is a pretty common occurrence on the sun. The coronal hole is a feature of the sun's turbulent magnetic field. The plasma that makes up the outer shell of the sun is constantly churning and crashing over itself like waves on the ocean. And as that flow of plasma moves from the inside of the sun out to the surface, it draws magnetic fields along with it, which also ebb and swell and crash and merge together. The sun is a raging sea of heat and magnetism. Occasionally, those magnetic fields will collide in such a way that they shoot straight up into space. And when they do that, it allows for an escape route for the high-speed release of plasma directly into space. That is a solar wind. As the plasma in that one area affected by the magnetic escape hatch rushes out, it's going to leave behind a patch of the sun that is significantly less dense and therefore cooler. And that's why these areas appear black on our imaging systems. They are not black, they are just temporarily less bright than the rest of the sun. The sensors that we use to record the surface of the sun don't have enough dynamic range to be able to expose for the difference in brightness. It's like if you try to take a picture of a really bright light with your phone. If you expose for the light, the rest of the frame will go really dark. Coronal holes are pretty common, but they usually occur at the polar regions of the sun, so we don't see them and they don't affect us because the solar wind blows either up or down relative to our orbital plane, and just shoots out into space. But if we can see one of these coronal holes facing towards us, that means that the high-speed ejection of plasma went straight in our direction. These solar winds are moving at 800 kilometers per second, or 1.8 million miles per hour. It's nothing to worry about though. These solar winds can't damage infrastructure on Earth. They get deflected by our own magnetic field. We can actually observe the interaction between the solar wind and magnetosphere in the form of the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights. If you ever want to see an aurora for yourself, we know that the days following the appearance of a coronal hole are particularly good opportunities. The only problem is that we're still really bad at predicting events like this. We haven't figured out how to forecast weather on the sun, we just observe and react. Speaking of reactions, in February 2023, people got a little overexcited about a swirling vortex around the north pole of the sun. Now, in fairness, this does look pretty freaky. If you look at the very brief clip of accelerated video, it looks like a big chunk of the sun breaks off and starts violently swirling around the top of the sphere. This comes from a tweet posted by Dr. Tamitha Skov, who is a specialist on space weather, and 
she got pretty excited about new images coming out of the Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is actually a satellite spacecraft that orbits the Earth at a geosynchronous altitude. All of the data it collects is posted online regularly, so you can actually go and look at the current state of the Sun in multiple wavelengths of light. It's pretty cool. The particular event captured here occurred over a period of eight hours, and it started off as something called a solar filament, or solar prominence. It's a little stream of plasma that starts to emerge from the surface. This filament happened to occur very close to the North Pole region, so as it rose up, the stream of plasma was caught up in the electromagnetic wind, and that began to pull the material in and shred it off from the surface. After that, the plasma swirled around in a vortex as it cooled and settled back down into the sun. As far as we know, this kind of event is rare. It's the first time we ever observed something like that. But the thing about the sun is that it works on a whole other timescale than human beings. If something happened once every thousand years on the sun, that's pretty common relative to the age of the star. Observing events like the polar vortex can help us to understand how the magnetic fields on the sun operate. One of the things that happens during these solar cycles is that the magnetic field will flip polarities, and this particular observation could be a sign that the change has begun again. Even though most occurrences with our sun are not as dangerous as they may appear, that's not to say that there aren't reasons to be concerned. Along with the solar maximum comes an increased occurrence of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, all of which have had significant effects on the Earth in the past and will continue to do so in the future. Sunspots can be extremely dangerous because they cause solar storms, which result in coronal mass ejections, which are huge bursts of plasma and magnetic energy that go flying out into the solar system. According to a report from April 6th, 2023, there are currently three major sunspot groups taking shape, two of which could be dangerous to the Earth. One of them, named AR3270, has grown by 10 times in just the last 24 hours and contains two dark cores, each about the size of the Earth. These two overlapping magnetic fields from the cores are very unstable and can lead to volatile combustion on the surface of the sun, which results in those solar flare eruptions. These sunspots have a 5% chance of creating an X-class solar flare. We measure flares by their strength, similar to the way we would measure earthquakes. The smallest flares are B-class, followed by C, M, and X. So, X is the strongest and these are the types of flares that damage satellites and communication systems. These sunspot observations come from the Deep Space Climate Observatory, or DISCOVER, which is operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This satellite sits at the L1 Lagrange point, which is a fixed location of neutral gravity in space where we can place a satellite and it will remain in the same location relative to the Earth and the Sun. The DISCOVER is about 1 million miles away from the Earth, in the direction of the sun. So this is our best bet at an early warning system for solar storms. The charged particles and magnetic field of a solar flare will hit the observatory about an hour before they reach the Earth. Still, not very much lead time. The thing to keep in mind here is that space is very large, and the Earth is very small relative to that scale. So the chances of anything hitting us directly is pretty minimal, but it does happen. One year ago, SpaceX lost an entire batch of Starlink satellites to a solar weather event. On January 29th, 2022, the Sun released a Class M flare, and when that solar wind reached the Earth on February 3rd, there just happened to be a group of 49 Starlinks orbiting at a low altitude of 130 miles up. After being hit by the solar flare, every satellite in the group fell from orbit and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere. So what happened? Well, one of the side effects of space weather that can affect satellites is warming in a region called the thermosphere. That increased the density of the upper atmosphere over a short amount of time and caused it to swell up. A denser atmosphere causes a phenomenon called atmospheric drag. Essentially, the thicker atmosphere slows down anything moving through. The atmosphere thickened enough that it affected the newly launched Starlinks. They started to experience atmospheric drag which caused them to deorbit and burn up on the way down. 
So it's a reminder that even a massively advanced technology company like SpaceX is as powerless against the solar wind as a wooden ship caught in an ocean storm. And stuff like this is going to become much more common over the next two years. The ramp up in solar activity towards the maximum is pretty steep. As of April 1st, we have already documented seven X-class solar flares leaving the sun in 2023. In comparison, the entire year for 2022 saw only seven X-class flares in total. We've just entered a very active part of the solar cycle, and the peak doesn't even come until 2025. Now, again, it's not something you should worry about because it's not something we can do anything about. I mean, maybe you could start doomsday prepping if you're into that kind of thing. This is just a really interesting period in the life of our sun that we get the opportunity to observe in real time thanks to the beauty of modern technology and the internet. It's crazy how little we actually understand about our own sun. It's the single most important factor to our existence and ongoing survival, yet it still manages to shock and surprise us. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.